Hey everybody, welcome to episode four of our Project Mark 5 build. Today we're going to be going over transmissions and installing differentials. All right, so we're going to be today we're going to be talking about uh, again transmissions and differentials, uh, and we have the shift forks here. I'm going to let Cody kind of explain to you the parts we're going to be installing and kind of the reasons why there are benefits to actually doing so. These are our steel shift forks. These are from an R32. The factory ones for this transmission have brass ends on them, and sometimes when you shift kind of aggressively, they can break, uh, which gets very not good quickly. Uh, this is our wave track differential. It's a gear type diff, uh, which is used by a few different companies. It uses a, a series of worm drive gears inside to control the difference in wheel speed between the left and the right front wheels. So that when you're on power and you maybe get some wheel slip, it'll try to keep the wheels linked together so that you don't just end up with uh, what people like to call a one-tire fire. Um, there are other types, clutch types, that are useful in different situations, but these gear types are, are good for street use, and they're even used by the factory in some certain situations. Yeah, so limited slip differential, the main goal of using a limited slip is for traction uh, under high horsepower situations in general. Obviously, being a front-wheel drive car that we're going to be building a big turbo on, we want to get as much uh, contact to the road that we can to keep all the power to the ground. So let's get into our build. Okay, so now we're actually going to be taking out our throwout bearing, and this actually, on this vehicle, and a lot of current VW and Audis, the throwout bearing and the slave cylinder are one piece. This has fluid that runs back here um, for that. Now, the, obviously, the function of the throwout bearing is this spins, and this is our, your contact point with the uh, pressure plate of the vehicle, and obviously will potentially make noise on higher mileage vehicles, so you would always replace that whenever you're doing a job like this. Now we're going to be taking apart all these T45 bolts. This is, these are to allow us to break this transmission case apart. So we're going to take all these out in here, and then we're going to break loose all the ones on the outside of the housing. All right, so before we flip our trans up to take it off, we're going to remove these drive flanges. Uh, we already have them loosened up, and we're just going to finalize taking it out. All right, now we're going to flip our trans up to take out the case bolts. All right, so Cody's cracking all these case bolts loose. Uh, once they're all loose all the way around, we should be able to lift our case out of the way once we have all the components out of the way. All right, so now we're going to take this case. Uh, this is where your, your shift tower is. This is where the shifter mounts and actually turns this guy back and forth and up and down to shift the transmission. So we're going to remove this as well as our sensor here for reverse and then we are going to be able to take all of our case bolts out and pull the top of the case off. Okay, so if you take a look here, this is actually what was removed from the transmission. You can see kind of your gates here for actually where the shifter goes to move the forks, um, and that's obviously how your shifter moves back and forth and stays in place there, and obviously it moves up and down to select the gear. So that's basically how it works, and we're going to continue with disassembling the rest of the trans. All right, so where we actually pop this cover off the top of our transmission, we need to do that to access the bearing on uh, this assembly has a snap ring for the shaft that holds it in place, so we're going to take that out now. That looks... I think we're... Whoa! <laughs> almost took out Almost the got him. <laughs> okay, so now we have the case split apart. One thing I wanted to touch on real quick, obviously a lot of people talk about the idea of whether you do or do not need to service your transmission fluid. You can see here, we've already drained the trans fluid, but you can see all the residual here from this fluid. This car had around 130,000 miles, but you can see here, there's quite a bit of actual goop on the bottom of this transmission. So, you know, you, you don't have to necessarily service your trans, but it is something that we do recommend um, if you want to keep everything going properly and have longevity of your trans. Okay, so these are our steel shift forks. Uh, they'll be replacing the first and second gear as well as the third and fourth gear 
shift forks that are here, you can see that they're, they're brass, uh, which is a softer material. It wears a little bit better against uh, what's called the operating sleeve here, which rotates. Uh, these steel ones run a little plastic cover on the ends for, for wear, um, which in modern oils will work very well. So these assemble right in there, and we're going to get ready to take all the shafts out and put all this together again. Okay, so you're going to lift up all four shafts. I'm pulling the disc. Yep. Correct? Yep, I think so. All right, so while Paul's doing a little bit of cleanup here, getting ready to get this thing over to our parts washer, this is our first, second... Uh, third and fourth shaft. The forks simply slide off and our new steel ones we can simply pop right on here. One there, one there and that's ready to go except now we need to modify our differential because all of these kind of come out and go in as a unit uh, so we need to get the diff ready so we can drop all this back together. Okay, so we have our differential out of the car. This is the factory one. Here is our limited slip from WaveTrack. Um, we just want to talk briefly about the open differential and kind of the idea behind it. As you can see, if as Cody rotates what would be the axle shafts on a vehicle, um, you can see how it operates inside. The main difference and, and why limited slips are, or uh, open differentials are not as good is basically because in a situation where one wheel would not have tra traction, what happens is all of the power gets diverted towards the wheel uh, with the least traction, which is why you don't want that to happen because basically if you break one wheel loose, all it continues to spin more and more and all the power gets pushed to the wheel that has no traction. So when we go to a limited slip, it obviously keeps both wheels driving at all times, uh, keeping all the traction on the ground that you can. Okay, so here we are looking at our factory differential that we just talked about and then here's our new one obviously we have this ring gear uh, this needs to be swapped from the uh, original diff to our new diff and we have to drill out all these rivets these rivets are exceptionally hard um, and they need to be drilled out so we can swap it over we have our ARP hardware that we're actually going to be using to mount the uh, ring gear to our new diff so we're going to start drilling and uh, we'll see you in a couple hours Three hours later. All right, so we have all of our rivets drilled out. We are now getting ready to knock the ring gear off of our differential. All right, now we got our ring gear off. We can now proceed with swapping this over to our other differential. So we are going to throw our ring gear in place. And uh, before we actually do that, we just want to talk about these. The other side, there's the nut and then the stud that goes through. They have uh, splines on them that have to be uh, pressed into the uh, differential assembly here. Uh, we have all these pressed in place. They're not all the way seated down. That's going to finalize when we actually install the nuts all the way and tighten them down. But we're going to install our ring gear, get it seated in place. and then we're gonna put our nuts on. All right, we've got our clutch housing side of the transmission case all washed up, all that old nasty oil is taken out of it. Um, we've already gone ahead and changed the bearing race that's down inside the transmission. Uh, looks just like this guy, the other one has to be driven out from the back, the new one gets pressed in. We've also had the bolts torqued on our diff and installed our new roller bearings on the different differential itself. These are a press fit, uh, so we run them down. We actually uh, heat them up to expand them a little bit and then slide them right on. Now we're ready to drop the diff into this half of the case and then go get the other half of the case prepped so that we can set the preload which is done using shims in the other half of the differential case. For the next step, we need to set the transmission housing onto this side of the transmission case so that we can measure our bearing lash of the differential, which is basically the gap and the, the looseness of these bearings. Uh, this is set by removing this race and installing a shim of a certain depth, which we'll, we'll be able to determine after we measure the lash. All 
All right, we've got our transmission case on. We're now going to measure the lash in the differential so that we can calculate the correct shim thickness. All right. All right, so we've measured our lash in our differential. This is our shim kit from Volkswagen. This is a part number of the order from Volkswagen that just has all of the shims uh, in the various thicknesses for this transmission. Uh, and we just have to go through now and measure and find the correct one, which appears to be this one, and we are good to go. All right, so we now we have our bearing race final installed with the shim. Uh, I'm going to test fit this one more time to check how the differential feels when it's actually got preload on it. And then we should be all set to go ahead and assemble all the gear shafts and get this thing put back together. All right, we got our diff set, preload's good. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and put the gears in. Be wary of where your fingers end up while we wiggle. Because yes. we're going to wiggle one thing and the whole stack is just going to do that. All right, we've got all of our gear stacks in. Uh, we've spun everything over, verified that everything works, everything shifts correctly. Our steel forks fit perfectly. Now we're going to go ahead and seal this up, get the other half of it on, bolt it all together, and uh, wrap this thing up. All right, we've got our training case together, torqued up. We're ready to put our shift selector shaft back in. All right, we've got this thing reassembled. We've got our shift console back in. Uh, got this actual flange in place. We're ready to get this thing mated to the engine and get it filled full of some oil. WaveTrack recommends the factory fill. We like to use the Motul Gear 300, which is a nice synthetic racing oil that does meet the factory specifications and exceeds them. And then this thing will be set to go burn some rubber. Thanks so much for watching episode four of our Project Mark V build. On this episode, we got our transmission and differential taken care of. On the next episode, we're going to be talking about installing an integrated engineering intake manifold on our FSI engine. Thanks so much, Cody, uh, for doing this video with us. We appreciate it. Uh, anybody who hasn't checked out Black Forest Racing and their, either their Instagram or obviously their YouTube, check them out over there. Uh, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it. Thank you so much for watching episode four of our Project Mark V build. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. The four and the five, I like, it f***ed my head up for a second. That's all. That's, that's it. Thanks for watching.